Hi boys and girls. I'm here with another story today. This one is a fable. Have you ever heard of a fable? A fable is a story that's usually about animals. It tells a story and the story has a moral. Now a moral is something that you can learn from. It's usually about you learn something about a way to behave or not to behave or a consequence for something. There are good consequences. If you do good things, usually good things happen to you. And there are bad consequences. If you do something bad, usually something bad happens to you. Those are consequences. And in a fable, the animals usually are doing something that has a consequence. This story, this fable is called the hare and the tortoise. Now maybe you've not heard of a hare before, but that's another word for a rabbit. So in this story, we're gonna learn about a race between a rabbit, the hare, and a tortoise, the turtle. Here we go. The hare and the tortoise. by Brian Wildsmith. It's based on a fable, a story from long ago, by La Fontaine. A hare and a tortoise were having an argument. The hare, who could run very fast, thought he was much more clever than the tortoise, who could only move slowly and had to carry his house on his back. There's the hare, and there is the tortoise. But the tortoise did not agree. To the hare's surprise, the tortoise challenged him to a race. We will run from here over the hill, through the hedge, then along the carrot field to the old cart, he said. The hare laughed. I'm sure to win, but we'll race if you'd like. News of the race spread quickly, and the birds and the animals all gathered to watch. The tortoise will not have a chance, cried the fox. Wait and see, said the wise owl. The rooster offered to start the race. The spectators stood back and the rooster swelled up ready to give the signal. In a flash, the hare was off, flying over the grass. The tortoise had hardly moved. In a few moments, the hare had run over the hill and reached the hedge. He looked behind but the tortoise was nowhere in sight. 
the hare stopped to nibble some tasty leaves. Hmm. The tortoise plodded on and came to the hill. It was hard work for him to climb it, and the birds called encouragement to help him on the way. It's a big hill. The hare had finished eating the leaves in the hedge and dashed off again at full speed to the carrot field. He was very fond of carrots and he couldn't resist stopping to eat some. He ate and he ate and he ate ate until he was so full he had to lie down and sleep for a while. The tortoise had only just reached the hedge. He was already tired but he kept walking slowly on At last he reached the carrot field, but the hare was too fast asleep to notice him passing by. Suddenly the hare woke up. He stared in astonishment toward the old cart, the winning post. The tortoise was almost there. The hare ran as fast as he could, but it was no use. The tortoise had won the race. All the animals gathered round the tortoise while he told how, in his slow and steady way, he had won the race from the quick and careless hare. He was slow and steady, and the hare was quick but careless. He wasn't very careful about how he raced, was he? That's careless. But the tortoise was slow and he kept moving. He just kept going. It was very hard and it was very slow, but he never ever gave up. That's the moral of the story. This fable is about never giving up. You might be slow, but be steady and keep moving because if you're fast and you're careless, there's probably not going to be good consequences to that. We're going to draw a turtle today. I learned a few facts about turtles since we were going to draw them today and I thought I'd share a couple of things with you. Every turtle, every tortoise has a shell. A shell on the top and a shell on the bottom. And the shell on the top is called a carapace. I never knew that. I looked it up, I read about it. And the shell on the bottom is called a plastron. And in between those two shelves is the body of the turtle. You can't take the shell 
off of the turtle or take the turtle out of the inside of the shell, it's all connected. It's all a part of the turtle. They can't climb out of their shells and they can't be pulled out. Also, I learned that turtles don't have teeth. Very interesting. It's curious how they eat, isn't it? Well, they have a very sharp end on their nose, sometimes called a beak. And they use that to grab at the plants, whatever it is they're eating. Some of them eat meat. Some of them might eat little minnows or tadpoles or things like that. But a lot of them just eat plants. So they live off of whatever they can find in their surroundings there. They don't have to move very fast to find it. That's a good thing for a turtle. Turtles are reptiles. So they have scaly skin and they're cold blooded. Some of them live on the land, some of them live in the water, and some of them live on both. Most all of them can swim. They have claws on their feet. And the ones who live in the water have little webs between their toes. So that helps them push the water aside and they can swim better. Those are some kind of interesting things that I learned about turtles. Here's another fact. Did you know that turtles lay eggs? Yep, they lay them on the land and they're soft. They're not like bird eggs. They're not perfectly oval or round. They're soft and they might have kind of a funny looking shape. And after the turtle lays the eggs, they bury them in the soil and just leave them there to hatch on their own. Yeah, kind of interesting, isn't it? Turtles hibernate in the winter. Do you know what hibernate means? Some people say they hibernate in the winter. <laughs> that means that they slow down and sleep for long periods of time. Now turtles dig and go far underground to do their hibernating. And they just stay there. They stay warm enough, no matter what's happening in the out of doors. And then when springtime comes, they work their way back up and dig their way out from underground. Turtles can live to be 100 years old. That's a long time, isn't it? I've heard of some that have even lived to be older than that. I hope to live to be 100 years old. I'm trying to take care of myself and eat good healthy food and get exercise so that I can live as long as a turtle. <laughs> Slow and steady. So we're gonna draw a turtle today. Go ahead and get your pencil or your Sharpie pen or whatever it is you're going to draw with today. And I'm gonna turn my camera around, get my Sharpie pen, which I think blew away in the wind. It's kind of windy out here today. So I may need to find it so that I can start drawing with you. Yep, fell under the thing. There we go. Okay, turn my camera so that you can see what I'm drawing. We're going to draw a turtle as though we're looking down on it from the top. Okay, and um, so we're going to see all four of its legs. If we were drawing it from the side, we might not see all four legs. And I think it's kind of fun to see all four legs of the turtle. So we're going to draw it from the top. We're going to be looking down onto the turtle. So I want you to start by drawing kind of a circle. My circle is a little bit flatter on this end and a little bit more curved on this end. And then we're going to give our turtle a head, which is just a curved line that comes out and a curved line that goes back right to the shell. It's kind of pointed because that's where his beak is. Yep. And we're going to see all four legs of the turtle. Now remember that a turtle's legs, the ones that live in the water, their legs are kind of shaped like this so that they can swim better. And there are four of them. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm not sure why, but a turtle has a tail. I guess it's just for balance. So you can add a little tail to your turtle. 
Now on the top shell of the turtle, do you remember what that top shell was called? Called a carapace. On the top shell on the carapace, there are little scales and usually the scales are in a pattern. Not always, but we're gonna make ours in a pattern, which means that it's something that repeats itself. That's what a pattern does. So let's start by making kind of a rectangle shape right here in the middle, right behind the head there. And then on either side of that scale, I'm gonna make a scale that fits right into the area there and I'm gonna make the same shape on the other side they're not exact but they're similar aren't they and that's a pattern because it repeats itself and then I'm gonna make another scale right here down the middle and I'm gonna make a scale on either side that fits right in that space and make another one over here that's a similar shape. And then down here at the end, I might just make two little scales that are similar shape side by side. That gives you some fun areas that you can color in on the turtle's shell. Um, turtles, I said that they have to, they hibernate and, and they also bury their eggs in the sand. So they have claws. Put three little claws on the end of each one of this turtle's feet. I'm just going out to a point and back in. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we learned that the ones that swim have webs between those feet. I'm not going to draw the webs on my turtle, but if you wanted to, you could. And a turtle has to have eyes so it can see where it's going. Kind of on the top of the head. I want to put a pupil in each eye. Every eye has to have a pupil in order to see. Now I was in Hawaii not too long ago. And in Hawaii I saw a lot of turtles and they were on lily pads. So we're going to draw a lily pad, which is just kind of an interesting shape all around our turtle. There he is sitting on the lily pad. Lily pads are usually very bright green and they float on top of the water. They're really interesting and sometimes they grow flowers. Lily pads will grow flowers. But they're an interesting shape and they just sit on top of the water and so the turtles will sit on top of the lily pad and that way they can float in the water. Now you can color your turtle in any way that you want to. I'll show you how I colored mine. I colored his shell kind of brown and his scales kind of brown. And then I made his body a little bit more of a dark green turtles really aren't very pretty but they're interesting and I colored in the lily pad that he's sitting on a bright green and of course I put some water all around and then you always want to remember to sign your name so you remember and everyone else knows that you drew that turtle I hope you had fun with me today I had fun showing you and I had fun sharing this fable with you it's just one of the very best morals that we can learn in life. Remember that slow and steady wins the race, but fast and careless usually has poor consequences. You can think about that in everything you do, whether it's your schoolwork or your chores or whatever, or racing, whatever it is. If you just keep doing your best, no matter how slow, you can win the race. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.